What's going on guys, this is me Asin, and today I will actually be covering something very interesting that we don't have in the TCG and that would be YCS tournaments that are best out of one. This one is not the first one. I think the first one was YCS Osaka 2018. I could be wrong, but I know that YCS is in OCG, basically just in Japan, are very rare. Like we, we, they never have them, whereas us, we have several YCSs a year, so completely different. So yeah, I'll try to analyze this YCS as much as I possibly can, but before this video starts, make sure you like and subscribe, check me out on Twitch and Instagram, and now let's jump right into it. So this one is YCS Yokohama 2022. This is Ridiculous Man, 3,000 participants that was held on March 27th, and uh, you might be thinking, wow, 3,000, what a crazy coincidence, huh? Maybe that was uh, just a lucky number. No, and that's also not the cap for the venue. But rather, I think, for the event, because look at this, man. YCS Osaka 2019, three years ago, so 2020 and 2021 were skipped because Rona, also had 3,000 participants. So YCS itself, you we, we just can't have more than 3,000. And that's the reason why it was completely capped. But there is a world in which we might have had like 4,000 players in these YCSs if there was no cap, and that would have been absolute insanity. But yeah, the format is a best out of uh, one, so no side deck, of course, seven rounds of Swiss, and it would be top 64 single elimination, of course. Makes sense because they don't want it to be... I forgot the number that you have to be for it to be top 128. It's a ridiculous number. It's like in the 4000s, outside of like YCS Long Beach or something. We were never really close to that anyways. I know YCS Columbus 2018 was ridiculous as well, like 3.6k, but still not as much as Long Beach. But yeah, there was something else that I wanted to show you guys. When we have these best out of one formats, just like in Master Duel, but in real Yu-Gi-Oh, what ends up happening is that some random ass decks can actually get first place. And ironically, this is the only YCS in history that has been won by Cyber Dragon. So technically, Cyber Dragon is a YCS winner, but the reason why I don't really want to consider it a true win is because it is in an alternate format. And if this was a best out of three, it would have been completely different. So in a best out of one, you can afford to play very dangerous, kind of go second, gimmicky decks. And still, 2,048 players in Japan, which is an extremely competitive country, a lot of ridiculously good players. And it was still one with a really whack deck. And Blackwing was fourth place, uh, Thunder Dragon, Gandora X, FTK. FT decks, uh, FTK decks are unfair, overpowered in this kind of format, again, because your opponent can't really side to beat your FTK post game one. But yeah, back to the one in 2019, we also had uh, actually a lot of real decks, Salamangrate, Salamangrate, Sky Striker, Alter Guy, Subterror, then of course Gandora X FTK. <laughs> this was ridiculous, ridiculous in the, FT uh, in the OCG, it, it made no sense. But now, we actually have a lot more real decks that would have been good whether this was a best out of one or best out of three anyway. So, Adventure, good stuff. This is the kind of almost, it, it's, I don't know how to really describe it, but it's the deck that plays Sangan with Crusadia, Arborea and stuff. So it's just a 60 card deck sometimes, or 40 card deck, and also plays Nemesis Corridor that you can search with Cupid Pitch, so that you can make Thunder Dragon Colossus that way. Now, True Draco is a li little whack, but I can understand that if you can't out the floodgates in game one, you lose. So True Draco is a pretty respectable game one deck. I want to say trap decks in general are very good in game one. And if it's your lucky day and just you're just winning dice rolls left and right, well, trap decks are obviously the best, but if you're unlucky and you lose dice rolls, going second against uh, Omni Negates, or Spell and Trap Negates rather, and proactive pops like Destiny, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, then you're going to get cooked. Anyways, Adignister, any best out of one, the Arrival Tower, whatever, the Arrival Cy Cybers Adignister is ridiculously unfair. And then this is the uh, kind of the equivalent of based in the OCG, Cyber Brigade Larry Lusk, uh, Branded Brave Despia, twice in a row, pretty freaking insane. And then again, based, quote-unquote, Flunderies, 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 Adagnister, Adagnister, what the heck? And Mr. Rune, are you kidding me? This is crazy. I mean, Mr. Rune is already doing well in the OCG. God damn, top 16 in a 3,000 player tournament. Yeah, sure, again, you can use the argument that it's just a best out of one and doesn't mean that much, but hey, still, that, that's still kind of something. Right, so this is the champion who managed to win with uh, the Sangan deck, I believe. Exactly, I was right, yo, so I did my homework, I didn't even look at the deck list, and I already had a good idea of what good stuff meant. So exactly as I said, 
The strategy is to make Cupid Pitch so he can search your Nemesis Corridor and then make Thunder Dragon Colossus. Again, that's exactly what I said. And you're playing with the Brave Token as well, so your only normal summon would be the uh, Sand Gun, but it doesn't lose to the Rite of Aramisia because it doesn't have an effect on the field. It triggers in the grave, so no conflicting whatsoever. Yeah, this deck looks really terrifying. It makes a lot of Omni Negates, like Nine Pillars with uh, with Baroness and stuff like that. Appaloosa for monster effect negations. Borrowed Savage Dragon, Wandering Griffin Rider. Going second against this deck looks absolutely impossible. And Hand Traps might be a little weird. Sometimes they... Uh, might just not be that good, and you can also chain block the search effect of Sangan, with Journey of Destiny being in Chain Link 2, Sangan being in Chain Link 1. Your opponent simply cannot Ash your Sangan. You would have to Ash the shitty effect to search an equip spell, which nobody really cares about, so yeah, pretty sick deck. Chu Draco again, Chu Draco, not overall the best deck out there, but again, if your opponent doesn't have the main deck Lightning Storm and stuff, this guy was prepared, so he didn't lose to that, but if you don't, then you're really going to be losing to Skill Drain and the other cards like Imperial Order, Vanities, Emptiness. What the heck is this format? Oh my god! <laughs> One duality only. Pretty interesting. No Desires. Uh, three Dynamite, three Ignis. It's basically at full power. That's absolutely crazy. Goddamn. Pretty interesting extra deck as well. <laughs> I'm really glad that this guy is not an idiot and not playing Monarchs are up. Monarchs are up is just really stupid. It makes you lose uh, completely. Just way too hard because if you're, if you're not playing with an extra deck... Uh, what, ha what is going to happen is that your opponent will know that you play True Draco, and instead of making the shitty negates like Appaloosa and uh, really early and trying to play way too hard around Nibiru, he knows for a fact that Nibiru is not going to be an issue and can just uh, adapt his line of play to be a little more aggressive and um, careless, I want to say, which is a good approach when you know what you're about to play uh, against. But yeah, no, uh, the extra deck can actually come up, by the way, you can make rank 5s, you can actually make rank 6 with uh, the uh, Sheridan and then make Zeus, whatever, but I, I would have uh, splashed in a rank 5 because he's playing twice the level 5s and he's playing Crackdown, which becomes a level 6. Well, the monster that you steal becomes level 6 and that's the reason why Sheridan is being played. Uh, that play can also work with Ice Dragon's Prison. It's the exact same thing as the Zombie Vampire. And then the uh, Lina, sorry, no, this is uh, Hita with uh, Goddamn Win. And uh, Arya, I forgot the names, but whatever. They have the same effect, just for the different attributes. Pretty freaking cool, anyways. Uh, Adding Nister, whatever, I mean, yeah, this is basically Towers Turbo. <laughs> Alright, this is the uh, quote-unquote base deck. Very freaking crazy, oh my god. Two O-Lion, two Jet Synchron, illegal knight, man. He's not legal whatsoever. Only two Ashuna. Now, that's definitely a little, uh, a little sus. I think you kind of want to play three of this card, but if the worm lock hurts you, then I can actually understand. If you go second against a back row deck with a deck like this in a best out of one, all hope is lost. You lose the game. End of discussion. Yeah, Flunderies actually looks pretty dangerous in this format. I'm not gonna lie. That's the reason why it was probably the most represented deck out there. Yeah, four Flunderies with uh, uh still i mean the other decks uh the, the brave token engine is obviously still tier one still the best engine in the world and uh, sorry in the game jesus and <laughs> yeah no uh, in the world I, I guess yeah true it's still just as good in the ocg as it is in the tcg yeah tri brigade lyra lusk whatever branded brave despia keeps saying branded before i say bray what the frick because the thing is i don't want to say adventure it's like four syllables whereas brave is only two so like why would i like waste my you know time saying something that just takes the no of course not yes very fun oh my god yes oh yeah i love resolving bread and fusion and seeing my opponent cry and having the negate for his negate oh yes is it different this guy is maining evenly matched very interesting and maining breaded exile i really like this oh my god this guy's well with the vanity's emptiness okay they were both onto like the same kind of uh approach i really like that and then foolish cross out two prosperity but this guy's on three okay okay i see only two link my okay so he's not playing relinquished anima never mind it is slightly different but whatever all right rose dragon adventure 10 ye again goddamn arch nemesis protos in the main deck wow in a best out of one that's kind of uh you, you got some big balls because it might be like flunderies and then you're like ah shit i committed for a protos uh, for, for no reason but yeah uh, speaking of the devil all right flunderies i think this is probably one of the decks that i personally would have went with any best out of one because if you if you know if you play against a deck that main decks maxi you don't care at all and uh, yeah you have some nice options you can prosperity for six get into that duster so you you're really resourceful in a game one but post game one i think you this is where you would start getting cooked by you know side deck cards and stuff like that 
yeah, uh, how many hand traps is this? Freaking 11 or something? Yes, sir. I'm pretty sure. Unless my maths are garbage. No, sorry, 12. There's Nibiru. Yeah, okay, okay. And Vanity's Emptiness, a lot of consistency cards. Pretty, pretty freaking nice. I would have played Terraforming. I don't know why he's not, but only one Ostrich. Wow, okay. I see how it is. Anyways, a Brave Branded Despia again. God damn, you know what? Never mind. Maybe this is... Uh, no, nah, actually, this had three representations, right? Still very good. All right, Philanderies again. Uh, 42 cards. Okay, this time with Terraforming. And with two Ostrich. So this is the very standard ratio of Philanderies monsters that we usually see. But this time he's playing 42 cards with no Nibiru. All right. And two Extravagance on top of two Prosperity and two Duality. Hmm. Uh, this guy is not playing Extravagance, but he's playing three Prosperity, three Duality. No Terraforming. Oh, Called by the Grave this time. All right, so people actually cut Called by the Grave in Flunderies overall because it clashes with D-Shifter, like your opponent's hand trap would get banished, and then you can't even use Called by the Grave to banish it. So that's the reason why they're not really playing it anymore, but this guy decided, you know what, I'm still gonna play it. And the rest of the deck, I mean, he's uh, on 1 MPen, 2 Ryza, whereas people usually are on 1 MPen, 1 Ryza, 1 Apex, or I guess sometimes very rarely 2 MPen. The other guy was on the more standard conservative route. And what was the other one playing? Uh, yeah, I think it's at the end, maybe, I don't know. I don't even freaking know at this point. Anyways, adding Nister. Yes, interesting. Adventure Mr. Rude, wow! <laughs> this is so cool! Bro, what? This is sick! This is so cute with the fabled monsters! Aquamancer too, right? What the heck? I am not even going to pretend like I understand this whatsoever, but holy shit, this looks freaking fun. Oh my, and it looks really scary as well. Yeah, so the draw power is on point. You have a lot of synchro plays with, I don't know, man, just being able to discard the fabled monsters with your Huggin and then reviving them back, make Needle Fiber into like Oradon combo. Yo, it's so much value. I'm a big fan, man. Yeah, I really like this deck, actually, and it's very impressive that someone managed to top a YCS with this uh, concoction. Very, very spicy, so nicely done. And uh, yes, also congratulations to the Adagnistra and Flunderies players. You guys were probably 10 billion, so yeah, <laughs> I, it makes a lot of sense that uh, a lot managed to top. But that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.